Hello guys, welcome again to the channel. Jose here says hello from the beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, great city of Madrid, Spain. Today I will be reviewing Luminar Neo, the new release from Skylum. All right, guys, welcome again to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for not losing any uh, new updates. So again, this is a review uh, from Luminar Neo. It's uh, the latest released. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the latest release of the software. So I will be dividing this uh, this uh, review in two parts. The first part is going to be the actual review. The second part is going to be actually samples of the software. I will be working on pictures using the software and recording the screen for you to see. And one more thing I want to mention is that I am an affiliate from uh, uh, Skyloom. So if you purchase the software from them, I will get a uh, commission. So I will be, I want to be clear on that upfront. So without any further ado, let's go to the review. Thanks. All right. So welcome to the first part of the video. This is going to be the actual review. I have some notes in here, so I will be following them. Just so I, you know, I mentioned I keep everything up to an order. So the first thing is the price. I think the price point for this software is very good for what it does, right? I think is a good price. I don't want to use cheap or expensive. So, and as of now, uh, is it, it is in the website around 74 euros uh, for the basic pack. And they, have, they also have uh, a 94 euro pack, which includes more skies and some other features that you can plug into the software. But with the 74 euro version, you are is more than enough, right? So the next thing I like about the, the, the software is that the ability to work with raw files. For me, that's really crucial, important. If I, uh, if I were to use the software without any um, I mean, editor that can handle raw, I will discard it right away. So this one has it. The other thing is the ability as well to work with layers. Layers are really important, at least for me, because I can add some more elements to the picture to enhance it, right? Like overlays, effects, and things of that nature that without them, you know, without the ability to include layers, you won't be able to do it. So it has it. The other thing is and I believe this is the strongest, um, I mean, part of this program or the strongest feature, which is their artificial intelligence system, right? It, it includes different systems to, that goes from uh, picture enhancing to actually, uh, I mean, retouching skin, modifying the body and things of that nature. So I think that they have done a tremendous job and I encourage them to keep on training this system, right? So it gets smarter and has, and, and it maybe will have more information to actually uh, help us more, right? So artificial intelligence is great. I think it's great because it helps you with one click, two clicks. You can do things that might take a long time using a manual editing software. Talking about the features that I think that stand out of in my opinion from this for this software the first one is this artificial intelligence system to remove power lines you know there are sometimes you shoot uh, you shoot pictures in the city and then you get this tons of power lines behind the picture at a subject or you are shooting a cityscape and you get this um, power lines so this remove this software removes power lines in one click all right so this is great tested this um, this uh, power line removal with two photographs, really complex, and I and I think the software did a tremendous job. So that's one thing I, you know, kudos for you guys. The other thing is the, the artificial intelligence contrast management. You have two options. One is in the developed mode. The other one is in the professional part. They call it super contrast. And this super contrast thing is great because it lets you manage and balance contrast in each of the values. I mean, uh, shadows, midtones, and uh, highlights so it's great the other artificial intelligence feature I think is the background removal great one click 
you click it remove the background and having the ability to uh, to use layers bam you can bring in any background you want and you can blend that background using artificial intelligence you know with enhancements and some other toning tools that this artificial intelligence system has and last but not least the portrait section i think is great i tested it with two different uh, photograph especially the skin you know one of the photographs had uh, fairly clean skin the other one had a lot of blemishes and things that need to be corrected i think that out of uh, one from ten i would give a seven and a half because i think uh that it did a great job it's not perfect because you know this is it is a complex matter in terms of skin retouching but i think for basic stuff and from regular you know retouching not so heavy retouching is great okay so this is actually the, the my, my review on the on the on the features the, the software has now i will talk about the pros and cons of the software right let me let me start with the cons right the cons the first one is that in most of the of the functions i mean the features the sliders the things that you apply to work on there's no cue that lets you know that the software is working for example i click and move the slider and i don't know if it's working or what i, I sometimes i think the software might be crashing but in reality it's not so i think if you can add some in skyland people if you can add something i don't know circling hourglass or something that tells me you know what i'm working right so this this is one thing i i think the the software needs to uh, improve the other one is uh when you are refining uh, the masks it lags you know i click the mouse swipe and the software lags so that also is really uncomfortable for me to some extent to you know i want something uh, one second two second delay is fine but then three four five six seconds is not so good there's no control set i mean in all of the of the of the features what i mean about this is that if i do something maybe i move the mouse incorrectly boom i i, I press control set and nothing happens so and <clears throat> apart from that i think those are those are those are those are the main cons right I think the software is very good. My computer didn't crash at all, even though I, you know, put it to a test, you know, doing some switching real quick, switching from one to the other, moving sliders, trying to test it, put it to a test to see if it crashed, and it didn't crash, so it was really great. So in the pro part, I think this is a great software for beginners. I think if you're a beginner or even intermediate, you have everything you need in one spot. I mean everything you need you have you know the background removal cropping um, artificial intelligence systems for enhancing for portrait for for most of the things that you probably will, will need working in photography regardless of the discipline if you're landscape cityscape portrait or you know any other theme of photography I think you have everything you need in one place I think the other pro is that it is great also for pro photographers I mean for advanced people I believe that you know if you are an advanced photographer you might you know have no problems with light you know how to set up your lighting you know how to set up your scene and your, your scene and there will be no issues you can use this software to enhance so i think it will be great also not as a replacement of your current workflow but maybe as another tool uh, that you have to create different results so i think it's great because this tool can work as a plugin or Lightroom for example and you will see that working on it. so that's mainly my review in terms of the features and the pros and cons um, maybe the last question is it worth it worth to invest in this software I would say yes if as I, as I said before if you are if you are a beginner go ahead and do it. I think the price point is great and if you are an advanced photographer professional photographer I think it's great to have more options artificial intelligence systems i think could help us speed up our our workflow so i think it is great so now let's move into using the software you will see me working on it and then i will provide more feedback all right thank you very much for your time
All right, welcome to this part of the video. Over here, I will show you the main parts of the application. I mean, the program and what it actually contains when you open the program. So the first thing I will show you is this uh, left side of the of the program is where the catalog information is. Over here, you will have the folders uh, where all the images are stored, stored and all the folders that you can create in here. Uh, their website have a lot of information you can learn perform specific and ample of information there are plenty of tutorials of how to's uh, that you can um, use uh, to, to learn more I will I will actually try to focus myself in uh, how I use it you know I haven't been a user of this I think I have pretty much two weeks and a half maybe three weeks with the program and um, you know with this experience i have so far i want to show you guys what i find great about this program and what i think they need to improve so that's my part that's my main goal in here so i would just go really quick over the different sections and then we jump into um you know editing images the first part is the catalog part filters you know will show you you know all the pictures that you have in in this in this catalog the sample images that they provided, I mean the, the Luminar Neo. Um, single image edits over here, they, they when you import an image just stand alone, no, not from a folder, it will show you in there. Uh, recently added, uh, recently edited, I think this is all self-explanatory, you know, these are the filters. Over here you can create your own folders and, and, and the pictures are going to be stored in there. In, and one thing uh, Luminar does, Luminar Neo does, is it backups the catalog every time you use the application. So it's an automatic thing that happens happens in the background. So moving toward the middle of the, I mean the screen, we have these three sections here: the catalog, presets, and edit. Catalog we already talked about it. Presets is are the built-in presets that these application have. You can uh, I mean, program. I, mean, I want to use the program. This is, we are, I'm using to the mobile word. This is a program. This program has um, it has this built in, but you can purchase more from their website. So you you press this button here that says get more presets, and you will have tons of uh, presets that you can buy from them. And over here you have the edit uh, section where you perform all this editing here. So. That's basically the interface. Very, very simple to use. I think you do not need a super tutorial in how to move yourself around it. I think that the way they have arranged it is very nice and user friendly. Um, the only thing I will probably um, tell you guys to study a little bit and get used to, and if you are a, another program user, like the Lightroom or Photoshop or some other, uh, it's just to sit down a little bit and get familiar with, with this section is, itself, because this is where, where, in my case, where I do all the edits in the develop mode, and then I enhance all, I enhance all the, the, you know, I add some more stuff using the creative section, the portrait section, if I'm working with a portrait. So. I think this is great because I, I use other applications. I use other applications, all the programs to do the skin or, or, or do some other special effects. So that, that requires me switching from one to the other or, or putting a plugin in, in, you know, running the program as a, as, a pl as a plugin. And this one does the same thing. So I will show you how, how you can do it. Uh, actually use this as a plugin for Lightroom, for, for example. But this is great. I think this is this, the way this is arranged is, is really great. Also, you have here a history of your edits. These edits are uh, it stores. Sorry for the dog. Don't worry about it. You know, dogs, they bark. They do that. It, it stores the history, the history of the uh, your edits. And you can go on, on details over here in each one and, and, and change the, the, the settings. That's great. For example, if you, can, if, you can, if you use the super contrast or, or you use the develop mode, three or four times, you will have the three or four times you used it, not once. That's good. That's good. And I will show you in the, and you will understand that better in the videos when I'm recording the edits. So that's basically it. I, I that's, this is the part of the, of the interface that I like. Kudos is, is great. Uh, the way they have arranged this. So I think the, the next step now is just to move to start editing pictures.
Okay, welcome to this part of the review here. Uh, I will be editing uh, this image in here. Let me clear, yeah, there are no edits in here. So this is the photograph I will edit. Uh, we want to get information of this picture over here was the, this is the data, that ISO 200, uh, 7.1 aperture and 125th of a second for shutter speed. I use the Canon 7D in uh, 24105 f4 Sigma Art lens. So oh yeah, here. Okay, so I want to apply what I my workflow in this one. I want to change this uh, the toning of the image. I want to put it more into that kind of uh, you know um, sunset stuff. Um, this magenta tones and and probably uh, pump up some of the shadows and also uh, the the sky replace the sky definitely i want to replace that one add a sky that matches that i will not do any type of removal of, of objects or people i just want to show you guys um you know how to do this using this uh this program i've been using this program for about two weeks and a half maybe three weeks so i'm very new so uh, the uh, Skyloom people has asked, asked me to test it and, and give a review. So that's the reason I'm doing this. I'm not trying to show you um, specifics of, uh, of each of the, of the options, but the ones I find interesting and, and, and probably can, you can then use in your, in your photographs. So let's start right away. So this one, First of all, let me do the crop stuff. It's suggesting me two by three. Maybe go if I go to the original one. The original crop was like that. I will. I will, I will keep this one. Um, <clears throat> a two by three slide. I think the composition is AI. Uh, horizon alignment. I think it's okay. So I think what the AI is suggesting me is great. So this is one of the power things of this tool is this artificial intelligence stuff. Okay, so now what I could do here, probably let me play a little bit with the toning. Um, I will do, as I always do, I probably crank up a little bit of exposure here, uh, lower down the highlights, and open the shadows a little bit by there, maybe. Yes. Let me see how this. Yeah, there's, there's no. Okay, I, I will probably reduce exposure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So far is good. Okay. Let me clear that. Let me see then what this enhance stuff do. I don't want to do anything with the with the sky because I will replace it. So what is enhancement stuff is doing? Oh, you see, it's kind of doing. Let me go all the way crazy. It's kind of doing the same thing. It's like working on the shadows and the highlights. I probably think it will be great to have like around 73. Then you think of maybe, yeah, this is, this, I think this is great. Yeah, don't, yeah, it's good. Okay, so probably can hit develop here again, but then it, this will create another develop uh, option here, you see? So what I'm saying is that I have this one here, example, and uh, has everything at zero, but then I can probably open the shadows a little bit more here. And then if when I go back, it already done it. But if I hit again, develop, for example, I lower the exposure like this, then when I go back to edit, I have two develop, not this one over here and this one over here. So I think that good thing is that if you want to put, you know, uh, the same type of, you know, just to create another thing, okay, do it. Otherwise, you will have the options always to go back to this edit stuff, which is, I think is cool. It's cool because it, it, it lets you edit the entire, I mean, uh, module, right? Not one, one tiny uh, adjustment. But I don't want to use this and let me just reset it and delete it. So I want to keep this one over here. Do you see? If I want to edit and want to go back to the shadows the way they were, I can do that. But I think I will leave it there. So, okay, so words are good. I, I, I like it. One thing, uh, I have this option here. We go back to the development mode. I have this app, uh, option here that says smart contrast. 
probably if I go all the way crazy like this, yeah, I do a lot of contrast. It's kind of uh, remove it that haze, hazy type of look. But you know what? Let me leave it in zero. And let me go back to the tools because over here, this is super contrast. Oh, we here can play with the contrast of the highlights. Oh, nice. And also the midtones. Yeah, cool. And also the shadows. See what happens. This one is nice. I like it. You know, it's good. Yeah, it's giving that whitish tone. Shadows down there. Oh, cool. This is nice. Really nice. Yeah. You see the mood that it provides. Yeah. You know, we so far come from this to this. Already looking, looking good. Okay, I think I like it so far. Let me now change the entire mood, I mean, drama of this picture just by adding the sky. So I just click the button, and I think this program is already figured out, which is the mask they have to apply to replace the sky. So the only thing I have to do is select the sky. Uh, I think the one I want to match is this one. This one here, not this one here. I think I have to wait a little bit. Yeah. Oh, boom, it's in there. This looks cool. I think over here we have options to move the sky. Yeah, the horizon. So we had so far done a great vertical position. Yeah, so I think horizontal position. Let me move it to one side. I do the other, but I think. It uh, did it did a great job about this max refinement. I think I don't need that. What it, what it has done is it's pretty neat. You see here. Yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, scene relighting. This in twenty. You see me if I go crazy. Oh, right, right, right. So this is nice. I think before this 20, yeah. Now I don't want to rely on humans. What are reflections? There's a reflection around here. There's no water in here, so I don't need reflections here. But the default is at 50. But probably that would be great to add a little bit of the of the color of the sky, right? Let's see kind of any funny or funky, you know what? clouds and on top of the no it's not in there i think it's great okay it's, it's nice i think the sky is, is, is in there okay so what else i can do here uh i could probably i will want you know this that's my taste that's what i like i like this magenta tone and this uh, kind of sunset type of, of scenes so probably i will go to the creative one the mood is the mood i want to yeah, let me check the mood. Okay, cinematic toning. Paul Springs, this whole feel, Long Beach, Los Angeles, Paul Springs. They, they, they seem, sort of opera, they seem to be really uh, kind of uh, into the hot, you know, into the uh, warm part. Let me see about Long Beach dust. Hmm, not bad. What about Los Angeles? Yeah, okay. Mm, about palm strings. This one is better for me. I have this magenta type of tone. Uh, oops, and then I, I lost it. There's no control setting here, okay? No. When you click this thing, it's gone. It's in here. So you have to go back here and do your edits. Okay. Let me change to. Santa Barbara. I think palm springs are, is the one I'm looking for. Yeah, mount. I can probably remove the mount. What if I go crazy? Yeah, it's adding that magenta type of stuff. Contrast, saturation. See, okay, not bad. Let me go to this color punch on. Oh, I, I will keep the Santa Barbara with this one here. Okay. Because he's adding that, let me see, is this, is this, is this another one? No. 
Which one was it? Palm Spring. Yeah, this one here. Generation contrast. Amount. Let me keep it in here. All right, cool. But then I want more magenta stuff. So I will go. Sorry for the noise in the background, right? Uh, I will go to. Where is that? Toning. This tone here. And I want to do that in the shadows first. Little saturation. Yes. Let me give this a little magenta type of thing. What about the highlights? Same thing. Not that much there. Okay, here. What about the orange? No, no, I want the magenta stuff. Overall magenta. This is great because that's me. And that's me control. What I want to. I think it's embarrassing. See from here to here. Yeah, it's looking cool. Is the balance here? Oh, yes, the balance between the shadows and the highlights. I think in the middle is great. More toward to the shadow part. I mean the highlights. Okay, so nice. I think this is doing a great job. Red. Ooh, nice. Okay. Now what? Vignette. I don't want to uh, choose a subject. This is just building. So I think it works the same way. If I go to the left, it will apply a dark type of vignette. Where are you? Oh, there it is. Okay. And then I think the size will affect, okay, the roundness, I guess. I guess. Uh, the roundness is in here. Okay. This is cool. Feathering. And keep the inner light. This is what I'm looking about, talking about. Good. So I can add more and play with the inner light. This is cool. All right. Uh, okay. So. One more thing, I would probably decrease the brightness, but I don't think I have brightness in here. So I will probably go back to my edits, find my develop one, and reduce the exposure a little bit. See what's going on. I'll go back to the last one, and then wait for it to apply all the adjustments. Yes, okay. So there it is. Probably you can go more in more details. I mean, you know, kind of showing up this guy a little bit more, um, and 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 playing with the colors. This thing is just a, a matter of what you like to show in your picture. I, I kind of like this one, um, and and the way it is, it had come a long way. I mean, this, this those are the tones I like in, in this type of pictures. But you know, uh, I think so far. Uh, it, the tool has done a great job. I haven't played with masks uh, yet, uh, you know, removing stuff from where you, you don't want that to happen, but um, I think it will work fine. Let me do it. You know what? Let me do it right now. For example, let's say I want to highlight this a little bit more. So uh, we'll probably go to the develop mode, increased exposure, I think there. And then go to the masking part, use your brush. And then I want to erase the, the effect or the adjustment from the, I don't want that to happen. So I will use this, and this is cool, look at this. You can increase and decrease the size of the brush. It shows you that here, this is nice. Okay, so I will probably use a big brush and start erasing. Yeah, okay, so this is kind of the invert concept, invert concept that I have. This is kind of showing me where you see that red stuff is where I am applying the effect. Okay, good. So I want to apply it to that part of the picture. Let me see. Yes. Okay. And then from here, I can play with the adjustments. I can make it brighter, a little bit or darker. Maybe there, I don't want that to compete. What about if I decrease the highlights? I think it's great, you see? Yeah, okay. Okay, so it's nice, it's nice. All right, good job so far. I think this 
program is in, for this picture it took me okay since I, I'm just learning right? it took me probably I don't know how much time maybe it took me around 15 minutes to do all this but maybe when you get used, used to that it will take less okay so I'll go back to the catalog and there's an image okay so the, the other two uh, they're pretty much the same I want to work on this surreal one I did uh, and then um, show you how I, I did it. So, okay, so then let's move to the next edit. Okay, this is the second image I will edit. <clears throat> this, this is just <laughs> an image I shot from the window at home. So over here you can see the data is uh, ISO 200, uh, F4, and 100 of a second using the Canon ES7D and the 24-105, whoops, uh, Sigma Art lens. So, okay, what I want to do here is just kind of uh, do a surrealistic thing. I want to just add, uh, add to the picture, not a, a brittle sky of the... That wasn't there because the sky you see there is the one that was present that day but i want to replace that one do something crazy in here so maybe you can understand a little bit better how this program has opportunities to 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 actually manipulate the picture so this is great so the first thing first thing first let me i think the cropping is fine and i don't think i need any type of cropping in here i think it is pretty well aligned so i would Jump in the, directly to the enhanced stuff. Let me go to this enhanced part because I want to use the things that are new to me. So this accent stuff, I think that's great. You know, it's doing what I probably would do with the shadows. Just opening the shadows, not affecting that much the highlights. And that's good. So I think there is fine. Okay. So what else? If I want to go back to... No to probably do the develop part <clears throat> over here I, I don't think i want to do stuff with the shadows maybe no because i will replace this guy so there's no need of that let me go open the shadows a little bit more from here that's great let me see okay good okay what else um you know what? Let me go to the sky right now. I think it's, it's, it's there. I need a little bit of contrast. Let me go this super contrast stuff. This is cool. I really like this option. Shadows contract. Contrast. Uh, let's see. Let's go in the shadows. I'm going to go to the black. I mean, to this here. Probably, yes. Probably like that. Highlights contrast. I don't want that to happen. Maybe it's. It's cool. You see, you see the balance, highlights, and the balance. This is great. I, I think so far this is the one, one of the of the sections I like the most. This super contrast stuff. Okay, let's go to the sky, sky replacement. And let me get something crazy in here. Let me see. This one kind of has the tone. This one here, yes. Let me just test it with this one here. Starry night poem. <laughs> uh, it's cool. It's cool. Mm, but th let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go to the sky again. Reset it. Delete it. I want to do something before. I want to erase this stuff in here. So let me just zoom in a little bit and test this erase okay so if i select this part let me see here okay erase Good. okay it's working hmm not bad not bad let me just undo it let me try it again Anyways, I will be removing the sky, so. So, erase. Good. I like it. 
Let me go, let me go, let me go to this one here. Okay, this lamp post. Uh, okay, a little bit. I'm using the other stuff just to give the program areas to copy from, I guess. I mean, I'm not pretending to know more than the guys that build this, but. All right, oh, I have to click erase. <laughs> All right, erasing. Um, wow, this is nice. This is nice. Let's see what happens if I go all the way to this crazy stuff here. Let me see. Oh, click okay, erase. Cool. Good job. Let me go here. Let me go here. Probably not. I'm asking too much. Let me go here. Let me go here. Boom. Right. Let me refine this. This is cool. Go to erase. Let's see what happens. Come on, do it. Nice. Really, really nice. This is moving fast. Okay, we go here. Let me erase this one over here as well. Oh, erase. <laughs> cool, good. I like it. Now is the time to replace the sky. Let me go there. Let me go there. What is this? Uh, I think this should be a piece of cake for this tool. This one here. Boom. And probably this one here might be a piece of cake for this program over we'll here. Skylum guys, this is great. This is great. This is nice. Okay, good. Now the sky. Go to the sky and get that crazy sky again. I think I'll have to go with this one here. And boom, 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 boom. Work, 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 work. Boom. Super cool. I don't really like it. Look at this detail, my friends. Look, look at this. This is great. I think this is doing a great job here. You know, this tree here without any leaves. This is this is great. Man, cool, cool, cool stuff. So what else I can do here? Let me see a sky adjustments. The focus. Okay, so I can go and change the focus. But I don't want that. I can darken it a little bit. Oh yes, this is giving me ideas. So can you let me just create more cooler row? No, it's warm, so I will go here and bring this down to the bed. Okay. Now I will go back. I want to keep this. I want to keep the the. I mean the high, uh, the shadows are open here. But I want to lower that a little bit. Let me go to my develop mode. <coughs> Use the explosion a little bit there. But then I will go to the masking. We'll go to the masking, do a brush, and erase that from the places I don't want it to be. So I don't want that to be. So this is the thing I really don't like that much. It takes a while for it to build the, I mean, the max stuff. I'm still waiting for this red stuff to show. But I don't know why it's not doing it. Oh, there you go. This is, this laggy thing is the one I sometimes don't like. I want to erase from all this section here, the effect. I want, just want the effect and the cross. So, Yes. Nice oh. Nice oh. Let's see if I add in a vignette. Vignette. There you go. Cool. Okay, something is ringing the bell. Be right back. No worries. Not that it Hello. Espera que suba el gallito. No, 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 no pasa nada. 
Me agarraron un punto que podía parar. ¿Quién se está bañando? Creo que Willy. Hola, hijo. Estoy haciendo una grabación aquí, ¿viste? No, no, no ibas a saber. Ah, tranquilo, yo pude, pude pausar. O sea, tranquilo, no te pasa nada. No pasa nada. Okay, so I think it's great so far. I mean, I'm using the crazy sky here, but you can use any sky of your own. I think the picture is cool. You know, come a long way. Look from this really dark, no contrast, no mood to this. I remember I used the mystical stuff. What is the mystical stuff? Let me add it. I'm, I'm just getting excited about this thing. About a man of mystical. What is mystical? Oh, it kind of adds. Okay, this is cool. I like it. Let me see. Yeah. This is nice. Great. So far, so good. I think it's fine. Um, if I were to change the sky for, for another one, I just have to go to the edit and get the sky part. And there, from there, select another sky. And probably, maybe this one here, maybe, I don't know. You see, also, it looks cool. It looks cool. Probably in this, in this case, I will add a little bit more magenta uh, to the buildings and to the other parts just to integrate that more into the sky. I mean, the toning of the sky. Oh, I have this one here. This is crazy. This one looks cool. I don't know. It's not real at all. You know, you will never find this kind of stuff there, but it looks great to me. This one here, also cool, but this is the winner for me. I like this one over here. Okay, guys, so this is the edit ideas on this one. Crazy. I don't know. Uh, I, I, will, I will say that probably is a great tool. I mean, um, the masking has done it automatically. You don't have to be dealing with masks. I mean, to separate stuff I mean, from the background, the sky, stuff like that. So I think so far it's so good. I mean, so far so good in terms of what I've done so far. You know, probably I'm going a little bit slower because, um, you know, uh, I'm not a, a long time user of this tool. I only have, I, as I mentioned before, two or three weeks. But I'm really impressed of, uh, uh, of what Luminar Neo can do. So. Uh, I think we have enough of this, uh, of this uh, edits of cityscapes. If you want me to do more of the cityscapes, go ahead and just put it in the comments. I will probably get more pictures to you guys to and play around with the tool. But before moving into into portraits, uh, I will I will I will say that this is my opinion in this cityscapes. I think the workflow, the way they have ordered ordered the tools in here in this. Um, right side of the of the of the program is great it's kind of suggesting a workflow to follow you know you, you fix your cropping you remove one you want to remove in the case of portraits and you play with these enhancements uh, and then you you work with the general uh, all time uh, developed settings you know bright I mean exposures highlights contrast but it has its own own special stuff like that super contrast and that all the smart contrast so those are things i encourage you guys to play with the ability to in one place i mean do everything in one place is a super plus in my opinion uh, if i were to to remove the sky from this picture in using the, the other wor workflow i use and probably I will edit first in Lightroom, then open that in Photoshop and replace this sky in Photoshop and then go come back to Lightroom to fine tune it. I don't say it's, it's not good, but I think having the ability to do it here in one place with great results. I think these masks are really cool, are, are really on the dot doing professionally while speaking. So, um, and again, you know, if, if you purchase this, this program, of course, I will get a commission. That's 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 not what was offered, and I'm straightforward. You know, I'm just not um, biasing anything here to you guys to buy it. I'm just using it, using it in front of you. So now, uh, the next part of the video, I, I will then do portraits and see how this thing behaves. Okay, so see you there.
Okay guys, welcome back to this video. I know I said that I will move to portrait, but let me show you real quick one powerful thing that this program can do. And and, and the thing is it, it can remove power lines from your pictures in one click. This is a picture I didn't I didn't I didn't shot this picture. I didn't shoot sorry this picture. Um, you know I took this from a stock place that I can freely use. And the way to remove power lines with one button is just to go, you have to go to the erase option under the, the essentials module. So when I click in erase, over there, here below, you will see these two options, remove power lines or remove dust spots. This is, this dust spots is for, you know, when the camera sensor is dirty, you can detect that and remove that for you. So I will just, I will just click remove power lines and wait for the program to do its magic. I think it, it does a fantastic job. I, I actually have two examples. This is one. I think it's great. You know, all the most of the lines are gone. I think the big objects are the ones that are still there. And I think we can remove that by just pressing the select one and and you know masking them and click erase. And it would take care of it. You see? Let me click erase. Good. Maybe I want to remove this over here. Let me see how it does it this way. If I click erase. Good. If I click erase here. Hmm. Yeah, probably I will do this. Erase this one here. Good. What about this? What about this one here? Uh, okay, let me see. Erase. Good. Tiny one here. Erase. I think it's great. I think this is. If you take the time to clean this up, I will probably then re recommend instead of moving forward with the same uh, adjustment, right? So I mean, with the same option, I will probably click close it and then open a new one again in, in the case I you know really mess something because otherwise you will need to start all over again <clears throat> okay so let me just delete this one over here I think it's great Yeah, I got a little bit funky here. So the reason I told you, you can probably go back to this and start again. So I think that's the this is the best way best way to work non-destructively with this tool. You click erasing here. Good. Then I will probably go back again to this part, this part and click erase. Now it's better. It's not super cool. Let me see if I do it this way. No, it's starting to build up building. <laughs> but again, I can do this back again. <clears throat> As I said before, there's no control set in here. Erase. Uh, erase. And erase. It keeps doing that, but I think it's not, yeah, it's not bothering me at all. Look at this. This is so cool. Probably I can try to erase all this thing here, all these things in here. Let me see. If I click erase. Okay, looks real. Looks real. Looks real. Not bad. Not bad. And then from there you can do whatever you want. I have another example in here for um, for power lines. This one. This one over here. Let me go click edit. This is not. One of my pictures is something I took from the internet and the stock because these power lines are really crazy. <clears throat> so let me go back to erase option and remove power lines and see what it does. Nice. <laughs> I took care of most of them. You see all that? Okay, probably want to get rid of this guy. No guys. No walking. Let's erase. Boom, that guy is gone. So I can play with this. Let me see what happens in here. 
erase nice nice this is what might be a challenge let me go here and this one here uh, mask more erase good uh, good, 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 and then erase. Okay, I'm just not doing what I just said. That create another one before doing this, because otherwise you will need to start over again. Okay, here, erase it is nice, really nice. Let me just. Raise the bar a little bit to see what you're doing here. Luminar Neo. Okay. And this is good. Coming from this to this. Okay, so that's really quick what I wanted to show you guys. You know, this is uh, another great feature of this, this, this program, I guess. You know, I will take forever doing this in Photoshop or any other app. You know, I have to go one by one and probably won't be uh, that, that, uh, I mean, that sharp. Probably, in, and, and definitely, the more you go, you get used to it, the more details you can go, the more pro you get, and you will be removing more stuff. Um, probably over here, maybe we need to play to remove all this thing and then replace the, the sky. It's, it's whatever you want to do, but this is, this is great. This is great. I think uh, they deserve a uh, uh, thumbs up. And this option, right? Okay, so we will move to the next one. And this time is going to be portraits, all right? So thank you very much for watching, and then I'll see you in the next section of the video. Bye. Okay, welcome to this part of the video. Here I will do the portraits. I have uh, maybe three or four pictures I will use for this two over here and maybe this two over here all right so let's start with this one okay okay so this is uh okay let me go back and show you the exif data this is a raw image iso 200 75 millimeter okay 70 and all the all the fancy data right so let's go here to edit and then <clears throat> let's start fixing this Okay, this photograph has a yellowish cast. I think it's the flash. So let me first correct this one. I think I go here and here in develop mode and in color, I find a white balance. So flash. Okay, looks much better. All right, next. Um, let me go straight to the skin okay so this is what i want to test in here so no crap i go to the portrait section and then i will do the skin one and let me go crazy with our mount first it's a hundred percent so far i don't know if it's working or not okay now it's working i believe that probably we need to have some kind of feedback that the tool is working maybe that flow thing in here or our glass or something that tells the user that you know i am thinking i'm working i'm analyzing the, the photograph that would be great to have so okay i think it's a little too much let me go to 60 or 70 around 70. yeah you know i have to wait for a change because there's no cue that you started and finished your thinking okay yeah i think it's fairly fine but still some noticeable blemishes let me go here and select the shine removal around the same amount mm, okay i think is that the, let me I think I yeah it's it's fine a little too much in my opinion but what happens if I tick skin skin defects okay to care about of this but then see what happened here 
So I suppose that I need to go to, I need to use the masking, then go to brush. And let me see, okay, yes, strength, not that much. And around, let me see, 50% strength, softness, yes, 100% to the size, probably will be a little bit smaller. Okay, yeah. So I want to erase. Okay, so this is the part, it's the first part, let me see. Yes, let me correct. <clears throat> here, so I will kind of want to bring back yeah, that decoration in there. Yes, and same here. Okay. Okay. Maybe a little bit more of strength. Let me go to 70% and try to rescue this part and this part here. Okay. Uh, looks good. All right. So, if I were to remove this uh, hair in here and the one on top of here, I don't have an option. I think the erase tool will not do that. Let, let's try it. Let's, I will go back to the erase tool. I mean, I will use the erase tool. And uh, let me try with a really tiny, small brush to see what happens if I do this part. And click Erase. I think, I think it's erasing. No, it's not. It's not copying the texture. You see, and I think that would be good to have another feature that you might throw in this. But so far, skin retouching is pretty decent, in my opinion. I will test it with another image that has a you know the skin is a little bit worse to see how it works. Okay, what else I can do in here? Probably I there's. This hot spot in here, I can probably lower that one. So I'm thinking of using kind of a radial kind of masking. So I think I will go here and re reduce the opacity, I mean the exposure to where I want to, maybe around there. I'm just looking at the hand. And then I will apply a mask. It will be a radial, right? And then I will invert it because I want only that to be in this section. Yes. Okay. So over here, what is in the red spot will be affected. So I think that's about right. Let me let me check how I go about in not knowing. I mean, hiding this thing because if I go to adjustments disappear right if i go back to masking i need to create it again this is one thing i don't like if i want to refine this mask i have to go to edits go to masking masking actions copy field yeah the only option i have is to clear it let me try the linear grad gradient um go back to adjustments and probably i will add a linear gradient this way mm -hmm. maybe mm, okay let me and then an adjustment you know, we'll probably yeah it's much better i think yeah it's matching this okay yes. good <clears throat> all right what else what else um let me go let me go back here let me just uh, what about the uh, yeah yeah choose the subject and this amount okay advanced settings feather good Inner light. I don't think I need an inner light. I think it's already find the way it is. Amount. 
there you go. I think that's okay. Okay, so let's see what we have done so far. This is the original. I come a long way. I think it's pretty good. The scan part, mm, I think it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Probably can go back here and scan and apply a little bit more of it. Let me just get here. Then, and again, I, I strongly recommend you guys to put something in here that tells me that the tool is working, right? Kind of something. I don't know what, but that will be good to have. All right. Mm, the rest of the things are fine. I think you, you get a point in here. This part is great. Probably I can play a little bit more with uh, where's the face part. Yes, this face, I will face slim it. Um, let me go crazy first to see what it does. Can you see, I have to wait. I don't know what's going on. If it's working, if it's, if, if it's not working, I just have to wait for something to change. Okay. Mm. I don't know. Oh, yes. Okay, well, I think around maybe 40, 35, maybe 40. What about the eyes? Let me do something here, really. This high color. And, wow, it's too much. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I want you oh, too much. And about the visible eyes, kind of matching the yeah, it's cool. What about if I want to play with the saturation of the color? I don't have that option here. I just list the visibility. It's just the the amount. So my be good to have remember I, I told you before before that I have a different program I use in my current workflow to work on this part but this one is doing I think a good job might could be better yes I think so but I think the so far this color I'm applying here is, is nice uh, let me just go back here and I think we have changed this portrait to a to something nice right okay so next one um the other one i have is this lady here same problem yellow cast right i think that's the white balance uh second thing her skin has a lot more of blemishes and, and defects that need to be fixed i'm inside i'm not saying that this is uh awful or bad it's just the way it is but we can probably try to work on this a little bit more. If I were to do this, I mean, if I have a client that tells me that once everything removed, then have, that that will take a long time in different uh, using different programs. But let's see what uh, Luminar Neo does with this with their artificial intelligence. So first thing first, let's correct this color cast. Uh, and as in the one before this one, I would go to the develop mode, go to the color, and then change the white balance to flush. Good, that's good. What else? Um, let me apply a little bit of contrast. My contrast, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think the contrast is fine. I will probably saturate a little bit more of the color. Yeah, I think it's fine there. Okay, I'm okay with that. Now, let me go straight away to the skin. Uh, skin AI. I will go 100% on this one to see what happens. Okay. Now, before after before after okay slight improvement uh shine removal let me just let me put 
put 50%, okay, and the scan defects. Mm -hmm. It looks blotching here. See that? Mm -hmm. So maybe I can try to correct that, bring it back, back because I think the rest is about right, you know, taking in consideration the level of work that needs to be done to fix all this. I think it it had it had done it very well. Let me fix this. I think I will need to go to masking, brush, and I want to erase. Let's do start with a 60%, 100% feathering or softness. And let me start erasing from here. Let me see what happens. Yeah, it brings it back. Okay, good. What else? This thing in here. So this soft box, I can erase that. Let me check if I can erase soft box. Uh, no, select. Okay. Get rid of the soft box. Hello, oh, are you working? Oh, yeah. Something like this. You see, I have a cue that the erasing tool is working. So if you can add something like this, people from, from Luminar, Neo, I mean Skylum can add something in, in, in some place when the tool is working, that would be great. Cool. It removed it. Okay, so the vignette now. Choose, may choose a subject amount. Okay. Uh, feather, index fine, size, all right, that's cool. So you get the point there. Um, maybe I can go back to the color again over here. When I did some saturation, I think it was in color. Yeah, I can probably desaturate that a little bit. And go back. See over here. I need to wait for the tool to do it, to do its thing. But I don't know if it's working or not, or if it crashed or hang or whatever. But I think is that's the way it is. I think they will already notice that and improve that in the future. Okay. So I would probably yeah. There you go. Okay. So I think it's correct. Maybe if I want to correct this uh, spotting here. I will probably use, again, a develop mode. I will lower the exposure a little bit, go to the masking part. I'll probably use a radial gradient, invert it, and draw the circle around here, maybe here. And then go back to, yeah, and then that's, it's fixed. I think it's nice now. Okay, cool. Uh, after, this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. Okay, now, what else? Uh, this one here. On this one, I want to test the bokeh thing. This this photograph has some uh, defocus in the background, but I want to defocus it a little bit more. And I also test the the trimming of the, the trimming of the, the the body. So no, this is not one of my pictures. This is a stock uh, picture I'm using here. So I will probably then apply portrait bokeh. See what happens. I want to see this part in here. What happens in here? But the amount maybe around sixty. Oh, what happened with the hair? Go. No. Okay, so first impressions, I think, 
is fine. I mean, how, how it worked, you know, the progression here, but it needs refinement. So I have a brush here, so I want, let me think. Okay, so I think I will need to add back focus. So I will click here, focus. Um, size of the brush i think the size of the brush has to be a little bit bigger yes and strength let's try 60. so i want you yes to add a little bit more there this way will be not that much let's see what happens uh, I don't know if it is done it or not. Oh, what, what, what? Yeah, there's no feedback for the tool is working or not. So how I can, oh yes, this way. Perfect. Let me go here. So the way it was like, okay, okay. So I will probably lower the size, smaller size, strength a little bit more, and I will go no, smaller, and I will go again this part of it. Let me try it again. Boom. Yeah, it's back. Let me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So I have an option to uh, bring back things that I don't want to be left out by the mask. I think these ones are fine. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now I will test the body one and the shape. Let me go crazy first. 100%. I think you are working. I will probably fast forward this. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I need something, Skylum. Need something that tells me that this thing is working. Give me a cue that I have to wait. No, no. Okay. So, yeah, that's too much. So maybe there. Yeah. Well, I can go the other way around. <laughs> Good. So let's leave it there. And yeah. This is the belly. Okay. Boom. Boom. Nice. What else I can do? Um, probably add a vignette. And choose subject. Go to the dark part of it. Okay. Good. Feather that. A little bit more, more and there. So what about the size? Okay, so before, after, before, after. I think it's okay. All right, so we go back to the catalog. I think this one over here probably can replace the background. Maybe I can try to do that, but uh, I have the replacement background part in uh, another part of this video. So I think um, this is good, can improve, you know, especially in some other aspects of uh, retouching skin. You know, you want to remove those hair strands or go specific in to certain spots of the, of the, of the photograph. For example, if I were to correct a little bit more about certain small things that can probably go specifically that with, with a brush or something like that that can mimic a type of this stamp I mean uh, the clone stamp tool so I can go in, in those to those sm small details and work with them but so far I think it's doing a good job okay so thanks again for watching this part I will move then to the next part of the video bye Okay, I'm here 
you can see in the screen um, I have in one side of the screen I have the program in my PC and the other side uh, you have uh, the uh, my phone so the app you have to install is this one called Luminor Share so when I open that app I will do that on my phone right now it opens like this and and you know wants you to scan scan a QR code right so the way I do it I will switch now here to my computer if you see I have this option here on the top it says share to so if I click connect to device right okay the, okay I know what's going on the thing is that I'm recording and I'm in airplane mode let me activate uh the wi-fi because both devices have to be in the same network so this one also is in airplane mode so i will activate or deactivate the airplane mode i will probably get some messages in there but that's fine so let me try it again if i click in here and connect to the device then you see that in the computer is a scan code a scan uh, i mean i need to scan a qr code so i click on my phone scan qr and then i put it in there and you see that i have two options send photos to luminar neo a mirror if i click mirror and go to edit there's my photograph but i think this is cool because from here I can share to WhatsApp or to, you know, to email, you know, all the sharing options you have in your phone. I thought, so I think this is, this is a good thing to, to have in your, you know, in, in your arsenal. This is great. So if we go back and then I want to send photograph to Luminar Neo, probably let me, I just did, a, for example, let me take one of these pictures, for example, this one here. And I want to send to Luminar Neo. It's sending that to Luminar. It's an imported images. Okay, good. So if I go back to my catalog, let me see. Where's my photograph? What is it? What is it? What is it? There you go. Here's the photograph. So I think this option is cool, right? But remember, you need to have um, your both your computer and your phone connected to the same wi-fi network for this to work so okay so let's move forward to the next part of the video thanks okay welcome to this part of the video uh in this section i will install the plugin i actually what this uh, does is that it will add um luminar neo as a plugin for uh, Lightroom classic and Photoshop so the way to do that is you have to open the program and then uh, you head to the menu here and over go to hover to file and then click on install plugins and then you will have this uh, dialog box here dialog box and then you for example if you want to go to Lightroom then you click install and then you do the same all right so I need to install okay so the way to do this is you click on there click yes it will reopen again all right so now with this when this loads I will probably have the option here to edit in Luminar Neo. So if I click the same thing, sorry for the Spanish, but this is, you know, if, if I want to edit, if I want to edit uh, with the Lightroom adjustments, I will say yes, edit, and then it should open the program. Yeah, there's the copy. Yeah, it's opening the program. And then I have all the options in here for example let me let me go here and try to mask and portrait background to see what happens and remove the background it's 
It's taking a while to work. Yeah. So, for example, let me just really quick go here and maybe apply this background. And I will, I will add it like this. Let me just let me just edit this. I will click yes. I want that to happen. Boom. Then I will move this layer here. And then I will fill it. And there you go. So if, if I hit apply, I'm doing this first time, right? So if you see some delays, is because I'm doing this first time. I want you to see, you know, me working for the first time using the different options for uh, from Luminar Neo. So I think over here is sending the picture back. Some fine tuning here, but yeah, it works like that. Let me now check. Let me close Lightroom and let me check Photoshop. Quit and then restart Photoshop. I think this is really cool because in that way you can have with one click it will open. Um, I mean the the photograph in the in the in Luminar Neo and then when you are done it will send it back. Okay, so let me go here. Let me you see it's in there. For example, let me let me open this recent file. I just I just opened this one here. This uh, um, stock picture. So if I were to go to Skyloom and Luminar Neo, yeah, it will do the same thing. I don't know why it's open a different instance, but that's okay. Same thing. Let me just taste, taste, test the, the portrait background removal. Remove. <clears throat> it's taking a while. Okay, it's not perfect, but it will work. Let me put this back around here. Boom. Let me fine tune it. There. And there. Done. Full opacity and switch. Yep. Now the rest will be just to adjust the colors and those things. But if I hit apply the photograph back to to Photoshop, I think might be a different layer. A new layer should be like that. I expect it to be mm, no all right i would appreciate if you can include in here i mean create a new layer because in that way i will not you know i will have uh, the original picture i can always go back here and revert back to the last or the first i mean by the opening but i think it will be great to have um you know when you when, when the photograph comes back from the luminar neo to have it in a new layer but that's it guys that's a way to install and use uh luminar neo as a plugin for lightroom and photoshop so now let's go to the next part of the video all right welcome to this part of the video here i will try to remove this background uh, from this picture so I already opened the picture here and I am the I am in the edit module so the way to go about it is you go to layer properties and um, there are some masking options here right uh, portrait background so you can click right away this one and then also um, you have other masking for this one i will click on mask ai i will start with this one so i'll click here and then 
the artificial intelligence system is, I think, scanning the image. Uh, so, let's see. So it's asking me if it's a human, sky, if it's flora, mountains, or things of that nature. So in this case, they are human. So based on their algorithm, it might show me a mask. All right, there you go. There's the mask. Okay, so let me check the mask around. This thing is not that bad. This is always difficult here, but maybe I can refine it. Mm, there's some um, some parts missing in here, so I can probably use the brush to correct this. So mm, so far, it's good. So the way to correct this, I go to now to masking. I think properties of masking, and then yeah, over here I have uh, action. So I want to add what is missing in here. And over here, we need to open this gap. So <clears throat> I will click on show the mask. Then I will select a brush and I want to paint full strength. The size is about okay. Softness, yes, yeah, zero for this area. I want all this area to be included. There you go. Now let me decrease the size here so over here i need to get really detailed so for for the video's sake i will do it really fast but then i i would recommend you guys to take your time and refine this mask to the best that you can let me see what happens yeah it is showing part of the chair in there. Okay. The reason I'm doing it, it this way because I want to actually have control of the masking right away. I will show you how to do it with, uh, with the uh, background removal option. But I think this one gives, I mean, let, let me have more control. So now we'll erase this extra part so if i click here and i want to erase the border i want to erase this part first okay now when i get close to the edge i will probably add some softness yeah something like that let me let me yes and then i will soften the edge this way Okay, yeah, not too bad. I think for the tutorial part, I think it's great. I will probably add a little bit more here. Let me see there. There you go. Yeah, let me leave it like that. Now I need to open this, this part. Let me go back again with the softness to zero to erase the bigger portions okay in here maybe this is taking too much time maybe you think it will take is too much time you know the idea is to be fast super fast yes but let's say that you that you only have this program so this is probably the way you want to go about it. I believe that refining a mask is something that uh, every photographer has to do. Sometimes if you have to, if you want to actually get the better result. So I think it's so far is nice. Let me open this one here, this way. Yes. And then I will refine it. with some softness in here probably not that much I will do this to recuperate recuperate yeah the, the chair I probably do this also in this side here let me see yes I will increase the size of the brush 
and then start painting here yes not too bad as I said you have to be more detailed take more time to do it in this case I'm going too fast I think it's about right about the distance and what I have planned to do here and then let me erase this part, let me increase the size of the brush. Uh huh. Man, let, me, let me check over here. Mm, probably let me, let me decrease this part, mm, erase this a little bit. Probably to get rid of this one. Maybe this one here. Maybe this one here as well. Yeah. I can get rid of all of them, but let's erase this, erase this one, this one over here. Okay. As I said, you might want to go a little bit more detailed than I am over here. Okay, good. Let me leave it like that. I think it's okay so far. Nice. You see this curve here? Yeah. I will leave it like that. Now I will add the layer I want to use as a background, which is this one. Okay, it comes in front. I will click the fill button because I want that to fill it. I think it's about right. I go then increase the opacity and then switch the order. Okay, there you go. I have it. You see the mask has some errors in here. Probably you need to fix that. And the, the, the way to do it probably is that you have to go here back to the masking properties, right? Let me do this. In the masking, and then you want to show or, or fill. In this case, I will get a brush. I will erase probably all this. Let me check. Yes, I will erase this. Yeah. I don't want these things messing around. This is a mask. Yep. Okay. Good. Now let me do some fine tuning in this one, this image. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I will move move the photograph. I mean, want to put place it here. Click on layer properties and put it here. And yeah, that's good. So let me try to blend this a little bit more. I think I want to add this toning. You know, the, the overall toning of the background to the to the picture. So I will go to the develop mode in this layer and we'll go to color and try to cold that a little bit to the cold side I think it's not too bad let me go to now okay okay now I will lower the exposure a little bit there you go let me see yeah and now I will try the toning in the creative part. I uh, will go to the shadows, saturation a little bit, and then let me change the hue. Yeah, much better. Make a little bit greener. Mm -hmm. And then the highlights, I will probably do kind of an orangey, orangey thing, maybe here. Saturation. Think there. Now let me balance more to the shadows side. Yes, I think it's okay. Let me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. This is the way I did it with using the background removal with the AI mask. Okay. So let me do it with the. Let me revert all this. I will go to layers and adjustments and revert to original okay there you go 
Now we'll do it using the masking and portrait background. So we click on that one. And I, then I want to remove. I will wait for the tool to work. Pretty much the same thing as the other one. I think it's the, it's the same artificial intelligence system. So it will take to refine the same. So I will not go again doing the same stuff because it will be exactly the same steps I did. And I will need to refine this mask. The only difference in, he, in here is that when you go to the refinement brushes, brush here, it has three options, transition, object, and background. The transition is this, uh, this, this uh, checkerboard here. The object is what is the AI is thinking is the object is in this uh, yellow color and background is everything that is in, in this light blue. So if I were to fix this part, I need to tell the program that this is the object, right? And then it will include it. There you go. The same way as you will do with the masking part, you know, you have a size of a brush and you start painting out or painting in what you need. The difference is that in this case to paint in, you have to select the part that says object, right? And then it will calculate the, what, it, what is needed and then add it to the, to, the, to the image. So if I want to use, this as the background, I will pro probably go here and reduce the size. Uh, let me see. Let me see what happens. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I find it a little bit difficult to do it this way, but it's not bad. Maybe for less complex backgrounds, it will work a little bit better. I know maybe I can try something here. Oh, over here. So let me let me go to brush, then remove paint and erase, or in this case erase. Uh, okay, let me go here. So I will do exactly the same as the other one. I will need to refine all this. So either way, you will need to refine this with this brush part. So I hope you like this part of the video. So this is your decision. I will encourage you guys to first try the background removal because it's a time saver. You know, maybe it will, if it's a simple background, not that many tones or differences in colors or transitions between the subject and the background, I think it will work really well. And, and, in, and if it's a little bit more complex, complex like this one, uh, that we have different colors in the background and the hair was actually messing up with uh, with some uh, some things that were in the background as well. Took us a little bit more of time to do it, but I think as a starting point and and as and use it uh, as a tool to to remove background is really great. So uh, thank you very much for for watching, and then we we'll move to the next part of the video. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching the video till the end. I hope this video was really informative and you have more information about the, the Luminar Neo Skyloom software. And also, uh, I want to thank the Skyloom team for letting me do, do this review. So again, thank you guys again for your time. God bless you all. Bye.